Hi, my name is Matt Chia. I'm a fourth year medical student going into surgery here at the University of Illinois College of Medicine in Peoria. We're here today in the Jump Trading Simulation and Education Center to go over a simulated laparoscopic cholecystectomy on the Symbionics Lap Mentor virtual reality trainer. All right, so let's get started with case one of the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. First thing I'm gonna do is position my camera. I'm gonna be using the 30 degree down scope the important thing to remember with the scope positioning instrument here is that the green dot represents your light cable coming into your scope. So if it's coming in at 12 o'clock, your 30 degree angle is going to be pointed downwards. It's the opposite. So if you have the light cables at 9 o'clock, then the angle of the scope will be pointed to the right. If you have it on 3 o'clock, the angle of the scope is going to be pointed to the left. So for the first part of the dissection, I'm just going to have it set here. With the, um, with the angle of the scope pointing downwards, and I've frozen the image with the button. I'm gonna start out with, the, with two duckbills for my dissection. The reason for this is that the duckbills are both good for retraction and the least traumatic dissecting instrument that I can use. Right now, I haven't really defined any of my anatomy yet, so this is the safest way to do it. I'm gonna take a big bite of the gallbladder here with my duckbill. In the words of Dr. Julius Bonello, grab it like you love it. Otherwise, if you don't retract this properly, you're going to make your life much more difficult. I'm going to pull the gallbladder towards me by, by pulling and also pushing my hand a little bit forward to give myself good exposure. And I'm going to start my dissection at the neck of the gallbladder and proceed downwards. The neck of the gallbladder is the safest part to start your dissection because it, you're proceeding from what is known, i.e. that the gallbladder is going to eventually lead to the cystic duct, towards the unknown, all the stuff down here, which is not well defined at this point. So I'm going to start by putting my, the tips of my instrument in, grabbing a bite, and then I'm going to push my hand across this way while also pulling out. The reason for this is that the traction you want to put on these adhesions is down towards the common bile ducts. That's what's going to break them. But if you keep pushing this way, you're going to run into the liver edge here. And that's how you, the tips of your instruments can perforate here. And you're going to have to fix those. So instead, when I take my bite, I'm going to push across while pulling out at the same time. You'll see that's the motion that I'm going to use throughout this dissection. So I'm going to grab, pull, push and pull with my right hand, my dissecting instrument. I'm starting again from the neck of the gallbladder and working my way down. The nice thing about the cystic duct is that it is a large, relatively muscular structure, so you can actually come down right on top of it and start to peel off some of the adhesions if you take a superficial enough bite. This is important in the OR, especially because when you place your clips, you want the least amount of tissue between your clips and the, duct and the structure that you're trying to clip. So the important thing there is that you want to have your duct be as clean as possible so that your clips don't have to do a lot of work. You might have seen that a little hint just popped up on the screen. This might be a little bit confusing, but the hints are just going to pop up when the machine knows that you're working on a certain area. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. You can see I've started to define a little bit of my anatomy. You can see that the cystic duct is traveling sort of in this direction, which is where we expect it to be. So I'm just going to continue to free up the adhesions that are obscuring the view here. When you're doing this, don't ever be afraid to let go and re-grab with your retracting hand, which in this case is my left hand, if you can't quite see what you're working on. The adhesions are turning a little bit bloody, which is what they are going to look like, but what I'm crucially not seeing is I'm not seeing any streams of blood flowing downwards, which would be a venous bleeder that I need to cauterize, or any arcs, shooting pulsating arcs of blood, which would represent arterial bleeders, that I need to take care of as well. I'm going to re-grab here and I'm going to push the gallbladder over to the other side. This allows me to expose the back of the, the triangle of Collot. I'll take down some of the adhesions here. Remember that when you take down the adhesions, you're always proceeding from known to unknown. 
So I'm going to stay close to the cystic duct when I do this. Pull it back, starting to see my anatomy reasonably well. So at this point, I feel pretty comfortable switching from the duct bill to a pair of Maryland dissectors in my right hand. Still using the duct bill in my left hand for retraction, but now that I know roughly where my cystic duct and I can see my artery in there as well, I feel comfortable progressing from the blunt dissector, which is really more like a pair of safety scissors, to the Maryland. It's going to be much more effective at taking down adhesions, and the slight curves helps me, especially when I'm trying to dissect down from the posterior aspect of the, of the triangle. But I don't use it when I'm starting out because you never know exactly where your cystic artery is. And the last thing you want to see is you're pulling on a piece of adhesion, then all of a sudden there's a pulsatile arc of blood, meaning that you bagged an artery. So the critical view of safety that you need to achieve, of course, is to see the tubu two tubular structures traveling in a straight line going right to the gallbladder, and you want to see a free edge of liver between those. And that would be your critical view of safety, suggesting that you are now ready to put your clips in place. So I've defined my cystic duct pretty well. And I can see my artery is hidden up here, so I'm just going to gently take down those adhesions around the artery up the top. Similar to the cystic, cystic duct, you want to make sure that there's as little intervening adhesions so that when you place your clips, that they have very little tissue that they need to get their way, that they need to get through in order to apply uh, pressure on the artery. The cystic artery, however, is much more fragile than the cystic duct, so you have to be a little bit careful when you're trying to take these adhesions off. I'm always, I'm constantly making sure that I apply the right amount of counter-traction with my left hand. To quote Dr. Andy Chu, surgery is all about traction and counter-traction. So at this point, I've established what I consider to be a pretty good critical view of safety. I have two tubular structures here and here headed straight into the gallbladder. I don't anticipate that anything's going back this way, which towards the surface of the liver, which could represent if the common bile duct was adhesed to this and was making a little arc that way. And that would, that would not be safe and I would have to do more dissection, but I see both structures going straight into the gallbladder and I see the free edge of liver straight behind it. So I'm ready to apply my clips at this point. I'm going to switch my dissector for a clip applier. And then what I found with this particular case is that it's to get a good visualization of the tips of your clip applier, I'm going to roll my camera over to 9 o'clock. This will help me get around the edge of the ducts and see the tips of my clip applier, which is the only way that you can safely apply your clips. So again, I'm going to take a nice big bite of the gallbladder. I'm going to pull it towards me and a little bit up now. Going in my, with my clip applier, make sure that the domed section of your clip applier, the one with the Symbionics logo on it in this case, is towards the edge of the, of the tissue that you're on the side of the, the, the structure that you're not clipping or that you're not going to cut. In other words, this time, when I apply this clip on the top surface, I'm going to have the Symbionics logo up towards the gallbladder. This doesn't really matter a whole lot in the simulator, but in, in the OR, that's going to give you a, about a millimeter of extra leeway, and that can make all the difference when you're trying to cut in between them. So what I'm doing here is I have the tips of, I have my clip applier angled like this so that the, I can see the posterior tip or the tip that's further away from me. I'm going to get this here and I pull it towards myself and I can see the tip, both tips of my clip applier, which means I know exactly where, what is between the jaws and I'm safe to apply my clip now. I'm going to push up towards the gallbladder and then squeeze nice and hard. 
let go. Then I'm going to flip my clip applier around for the reasons that I was talking about before. And I'm going to clip once on the specimen side and twice on the patient side. All right. Same thing. I'm going to clip once on my specimen side for the cystic artery. Flip it over. Clip twice on the patient side. You don't need to do these all at once. You can always clip your cystic duct and then cut it and then go back and that gives you better visualization of your cystic artery. However, if you've done it enough, it's much more efficient to clip them all at the same time and reduce the number of instrument changes you have to do. So now I've clipped, I'm looking down, I have good hemostasis there. I don't see any oozing or leaking of bile or blood from the patient side where I had applied my clips. So now it's just a matter of freeing the gallbladder up off of the surface of the liver so that we can take it out. So I'm going to use a hook electrode. You can use a hook or a spatula. The hook will give you just a little bit better, better of, an, of a discrete angle when you start to take the gallbladder off. You'll notice that when I do this, my instruments are kind of crossing themselves. That's usually a no-no. So once I free up the bottom part of this, I'm actually going to put the electrode into my left hand just based off of the anatomy of this particular case and I'm going to switch my right hand to become my retracting hand. Now I've got a duck bill in my right hand. I'm going to take a nice big bite of the gallbladder, apply my counter traction and that gives me a nice plane here in which I can take the in which I can free up all the adhesions off of the gallbladder. So I can just come in this nice plane of tissue here and I can take the gallbladder off very easily from this angle. Notice that now my my instruments are not crossing in the body, I'm not running into myself and this provides a very stable and good range of motion for me to free up the gallbladder. You can, do, you can play around with this section, do it whatever way that fits you. I've just found that this is the easiest way from my perspective to take the gallbladder off the surface of the liver. Always staying in that technically avascular plane between the gallbladder and the liver. And we freed it up. So that will play a little video of you successfully in one try taking the gallbladder out of the patient in an endo bag. At this point you could be finished but for technicality's sake, at this point what you'd want to do if you were in a real patient is you would want to inspect the surface of the liver. You want to inspect the bed to look for any bleeding, you want to irrigate and make sure that everything's clean. So I'm going to irrigate the surface of the liver, check for any again streams of blood oozing down that would be venous bleeders. If I did see any I would cauterize them. I don't see anything at this point. You'd also want to suck and at this point, I can say that I've achieved hemostasis. We're going to withdraw the instruments from the patient, close skin, and finish the case.